The funny thing is with networks is that they're about exchange processes. People give me CDs, I give them CDs, stickers, um, giving away bits and pieces of their DJ set to give other uh, people a, st a glimpse of what their style is like. Grassroots distribution. Um, it's a kind of a youth culture exchange mechanism. Psychic trading JPEGs and sending friends some images of what you're up to. People who trade records with each other. Some of those people would buy records from other people and some of them would just give and trade. The whole way that you can kind of look at the way stickers and CDs and MP3 files and stuff like that work is that it's giving but also with the sense that the gift is never uh, an isolated incident. It's part of an entire culture where people are all continuously playing with recordings exchanging recordings. The idea of giving you know, and receiving is still its what uh, several theoreticians would call a gift economy. If a lot of DJ culture is based on informal networks, people talking to each other, and you've got a network that's primarily men and men who are pretty much only used to talking to each other, then I might miss some information because I'm not part of that network. So what I've had to do is just uh, trust my instincts and build, well, build my own network. These days I spend a lot of time on the internet is where music is. At least the record industry is, is crying that <laughs> the, the downloading is killing it. The problem for normal record labels is that they haven't adjusted to the new forms of exchange and giving and uh, MP3 files, a lot of people might not like an entire album, they might like one song. The interesting thing is that at the same time that's creating a huge boon for music in general. I mean there's so much mu more music out there and it's so much easier to access than it's ever been. There's so many different outlets. I can put up tracks on my website and allow people to download them and that type of distribution is so much huger than what I ever had access to before. I have a lot of DJ mixes that are online. People have been emailing me from around the world saying, I have a radio show on such and such station. Do you mind if we play your mix or your tracks? It's interesting that now instead of having to necessarily you know, mail some hard copies of vinyl or CDs to somebody that they can just download your music and, and play it on their show that day. You have remixes online, you have people exchanging continuously. My stuff's downloadable from iTunes. I also have stuff downloadable from my website, djspooky.com. I recently did a DJ mix for this website called Blentwell, and in the first two weeks there were 13,000 downloads. If I had pressed up a CD of that mix, and had somehow been able to get it into a distributor without having to deal with all the paperwork, maybe it would have sold a thousand copies. It's opened up an entirely new world, and especially because everyone's got these, these players now, these digital players, it's like people are just out there like looking for this stuff all the time. And the way the iPod playlist is transformed, the way people listen to music, is that you're no longer basing anything on just a full album. As a DJ, I'm one of those consumers of all the media that's out there. all these kind of social network sites, um, they're about people sharing their taste, sharing their file list, playlist, media, you know, outlets. And that's what makes it fun. One amazing venue for that has been MySpace. At first I kind of thought it was a joke, but as I got more deeply into it and as more and more people come onto it and as it becomes more of a channel for music, I've been finding that every day I'm finding new amazing music on there. And sometimes people let you download it right away. Other times I'll start correspondence with people and ask them if they can send me tracks. Because I'm DJing digitally now, it's a much quicker and easier way to, to get a hold of new music and stuff that's not even out on labels. It's just people making, you know, making music. And some of it is really great. Essentially, it's about uh, a community of exchange. It's a community, but again, geography means nothing. DJs collaborate with a lot of other musicians and artists because it's part of that kind of exchange process I was talking about earlier. I've also been meeting artists to collaborate with on MySpace, like this vocalist named Zulu from Chicago, who's a really great raga vocalist. He sends me vocals and I'll make beats and I'll send him beats and he'll make vocals and met a number of people that way. Instrumental tracks can only go so far in hip-hop and electronic music. Getting vocalists, getting different people to respond to the styles, it means that you have to send files back and forth. It means that there's a kind of 
the, the surrealists like to call this process the exquisite corpse back in the 20s and uh, turn of the last century. Um, but for us, it's a natural everyday extension of living in a digital environment. So when I work with hip-hop MCs like Killer Priest and Wu-Tang, or when I worked with Yoko Ono, or when I've worked with, you know, say for example, just recently I worked with The Doors because I did a remix of um, Jim Morrison, um, and for the lead single for my Trojan Records project, I just did a remix of Bob Marley, and they gave me Bob Marley's voice. Um, so this kind of stuff is always a kind of uh, collaboration with the expressions of others, you know, and that's what makes it so beautiful is that the collaboration brings your energy to their zone, it brings their energy to your zone, and you everybody uh, kind of learns from the process, and that's what, uh, that's what makes it a beautiful situation.